Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Quarter. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install OpenWRT on the Aruba AP175. The AP175 is a high-performance industrial rate outdoor asset point that can operate in high-density campuses, extreme industrial production areas, and other harsh environments. It has more or less the same hardware specifications as the AP175. Besides the differences in the heavy and solid casing, the AP175 also has the DS1374C real-time clock and the LM75 sensor temperature. The OpenWRT support for the AP175 was officially available on March 26, 2023. The pull requests were created by Horikas on September 2022 after a few months of hard working thanks to Horikas and other developers involved. The AP175 firmware is now available on the OpenWRT Snapshot branch. The OpenWRT installation process is similar to the AP105, which I already made a video before. The installation process consists of two main steps. Replace the stock U-boot with a custom U-boot that allows on-site kernel to boot, such as the OpenWRT firmware. After that, you need to write a custom U-boot to the internal SBI North flash with a CH314A SBI flasher, or use a Raspberry Pi SBC and directly connect it to the SBI flash chip with a test clip. Once the custom U-boot has been flashed, Use a USB A to A cable to establish the serial connection between your PC and the AP175. From this, use the normal U boot serial flashing procedure to boot the OpenWRT system image via TFTP. While waiting for the full installation procedure to be created on OpenWRT Wiki, I will put it on my website first. You can check out the link in the video description to get started. Before getting started, you will need the below file. Custom U-Boot for the AP175, which can be built using GitHub repository from Horikas, or download from my website. The OpenWRT system upgrade image, which can be found on the OpenWRT snapshot builds. Let's begin with the first part, which is writing the custom U-Boot to the AP175. Since I already got the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, I'm going to connect it to the SBI flagship on the AP175 with a test clip. On the screen is the connection diagram. Of course, you will also need a suitable screwdriver to open the AP175 casing to accept the SBI flagship. There's something I want to have your attention on. According to Horikas, his AP175 is having the Macronis SBI flagship model MX25L12A45EMI-10G. However, my AP175 is having the S25FL12AP from Spansion. Therefore, you need to find out what is the SBI NOR chip on the AP175 in order to run the correct command with flash room, or else you may break the AP175. Beside that, please create a full backup of your flash memory if you want to revert to the stock firmware, because as of now, there is no way to revert to the stock firmware after OpenWRT has been flashed. Now we will create a jump of the SBI flash chip. And after that, we are going to apply the custom U-boot for the AP175 into it. Before we get started, make sure you have downloaded the custom U-boot for AP175 and place it somewhere on your home directory. So this is the instruction for the AP175 and it is more or less the same with the AP105 except for the flat shift model is different. Alright, so before you go, let's go to the configuration right here and make sure that the SBI is enabled. So we have the interface SBI enabled. Alright, let's open the terminal. So first of all, you will need to identify the flagship on your AP175 
and usually you can find the name of the chip on the chip itself. However, we can do this with the flash room and also to check if the communication is good. Alright, so let's say if I run the command flash room dash R and then AP 175 stop jump dot room dash P and then uses my Linux device this one and paste in and hit enter so when I run this command the program had detected some expansion flat chip right here so we can see that we have the at 25 FL 1 to AP and then 1 to 9 P and something like that so for my case, I can see that on the board it is at 25 FL1 to AP. So I will use this one to get started. All right, so let's copy this one and then replace this one with my flat chip model. All right, so here it is. And then for this command, we can also replace this. All right, very good. So. First of all, we are going to create a DOM of the flat chip. So let's do that. Right click and paste. So flat room, uh, we're going to save this one at this name. And this is the Linux SBI device. And this is the speed. And this is the flat chip. All right, let's hit enter. Perfect. We can see a message that it has found a expansion flash chip and it is now reading the flash. Reading flash done. And right now, if we go to the folder right here, we should see our flat file, which is the ap 175spidomroom And to make sure, I will run another time. And this time, I'm going to rename it to something like maybe dumb2.room. All right, so to be sure, I'm going to run the third time. Very good. The next step will be create a copy of your SBI flat DOM for us to modify. So CB. All right, let's do that. Hit enter. And now we're going to erase something. So let's copy and paste. So if you have some, it is recommended to read through, but you are too busy, then you just need to copy and paste. The fourth step is to apply the custom U-boot on the AP175. And lastly, we need to use this command to write back to modify flash room to the SBI flat chip. So at this step, double check all of the command and make sure that you have specified the correct name the correct device and the correct flat chip in order to run it or else it may break your device. All right, so everything had been successful and now we can go back to the PC to continue with the installation. Now I'm going to connect the AP175 USB port to the PC using the USB A to A cable. And then I will be connecting the Ethernet cable from my PoE adapter to the AP175 as well. The ODN of the PoE adapter is a LAN cable and it will be connected to my PC for sure. 
so that I can easily configure the TFTPD server. After connect the PC to my AP175 with the PoE adapter and connect the USB debug to the PC, I can see that the device is up and running on COM6. So let's open PuTTY, go to several connections, the COM port is 6 and the speed is 115200 and hit open. And right here, I can see some error messages. And anyway, the device is trying to put the firmware.bin file from the TFTP server 192.168.1.1. So now I'm going to go to the network and internet settings, go to the adapter option, and then I'm going to change my IPv4 address to 192. Dot one six a dot one and then one zero one and hit OK. All right, so this is the correct IP address for the server, but now we will need the firmware. So it will be a system upgrade image for OpenWRT. And for this video, I will just get the temporary OpenWRT image from Huricus. So later on, you will need to get this file either from the official GitHub or from the OpenWRT page for the AP175. So let's download the SWAT system upgrade.bin file. And after that, let's open the file. So let's rename it to firmware.bin. And after that, we are going to start the TFTPD64 or 32 server. Now let's click the browse button and select the folder where this file is located. In this case, it is located on this Firefox directory. Hit OK. And right after I hit OK, I can see a file transferring happening in the background. So I believe that the AP175 should be trying to boot up this file. Very good. Let's wait for it. The AP175 is trying to load the OpenWRT firmware from the server and everything is happening right now. So after this, the AP175 should be up and running with OpenWRT image. All right. We can see that the file transferring is completed and right now the OpenWRT snapshot build for the AP175 is being written to the flash memory of the AP175. This is really great to see. And very good, we can see that OpenWRT is now booting up on the AP175. Let's wait for a few minutes. And after that, we should be able to log into the Lucy page. I'm not sure if Lucy is available, but let's check it out. For some reason, there is no update on the console right now. So perhaps there's something wrong or the OpenWRT should be up and running. So let's try to ping and perfect. We have the respawn from 192.168.1.1. So let's open a new tab and let's go to 192.168.1.1. And unfortunately, Lucy is not pre-installed. So we will need to accept to the AP175 with edit age. So 192.168.1.1, accept. The device name is root and then no password. Very good. So we are inside the AP175 with OpenWRT. And if I type IP link, let's see what do we have. We have WLAN 0 and WLAN 1, and we have a single Ethernet port. So what if I type cat proc CPU info? All right, so it is AdWords AR. 7161 revision 2 and the machine the Arupal AP175. All right, so so far we can see that OpenWRT has been up and running on the AP175. 
And now let's try to configure a static IP address and let's turn it into an asset point. I'm going to connect this AP to my network, which is 172.16.9.1/24. So I'm going to assign a static IPv4 address for it. VETC config network. All right. So I'm going to assign the static IPv4. So now let's press the I key to switch to the insert mode, and you can see the I text right here. The option IP address should be. Let me change it to. One seven two dot sixteen dot nine. This time it will be. Dot maybe dot two five. Zeros and the net mask should be slash twenty four or two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zeros. All right, everything is good. Right and quick, and right now let me see if we have any or the config. So let's go to cd etc config network. All right. So right now let's go to the cd. Now let's navigate to the etc config folder and see what else do we have. So we have the SCP. So for an asset point, for an asset point, I'm going to disable the SCP as well. So let's run v, GSCP and hit enter, and let's see. So option domains and we have the option lease and all kind of thing. All right. So now I press the I key to switch to the insert mode again, and I will put option ignore equal to one for the LAN interface to make sure that the SCP server is not running on the LAN interface. All right. So we can run W Q right and quick. All right. So just now. So now we have modified the DHCP configuration, and now let's go and check the network configuration. So right here, I have. <clears throat> so just now, I have specified an IPv4 address for the LAN interface, which is one seven two dot sixteen dot nine dot two five zero, which is in the same subnet with my current network. But I have yet to set the gateway or the DNS server, so let's do that together. Eyes and then option gateway, and then it should be one seven two dot sixteen dot nine dot one, and then option DNS one seven two dot sixteen dot nine dot one as well. So very good. Right and quick. All right. So right now, let's reset. Now let Thai service network restart. And let's connect the AP one seven five to my working network. All right. So this is my current network. And now let's try to ping the device at one seven two dot sixteen dot nine dot two five zero, and wait, we see the response. So let us go to the device again. Accept and log in. So let's run OPKG update. Let's see if everything is working or not. All right, so we cannot download, so I'm not sure what is wrong. There is an error message, and it looks like that there's something wrong with the DNS. So let's try to ping Google.com and see if it can resolve. All right.
bad address, which means the DNS server is not working. So we can see that the AP175 cannot resolve the domain name into IP address. So let's see how we can configure the forwarding DNS server with CLI. Forwarding DNS server CLI. All right, so this is so this is the command for DNS forwarding and now let's copy that and paste to the edit edge. Very good. Now let's try to ping google.com and perfect. We can see the IPv4 address. So now we should be able to run the OPKG update. Again, it's failed to download. So what is wrong right here? Ping download.openwrt.org. Yes, we can ping, but why we cannot update? wget returns auto file. So it's not like we will need to modify. All right, so I think we will need to take a look at the etc opkg distribution feed and try to change from HTTPS to HTTP. So let's go to CDs, etcs, and then let's see opkg. All right, so if I run the LS, I will have the custom fit and distribution fit. So let UV to modify that. So I will press the I key to switch to the insert mode as usual. Delete the S to make sure all the requests is HTTP. After that, press the ESC key, colons, right and quick. And let's run OPKG update again. And this time we can update the package database. So after this, we will be installing Lucy's on the AP175. However, I can see that this process if now let's run OPKG install Lucy and we should be good to go. I can see that I can see that the process of manually install Lucy take a lot of time. So I will try to build a firmware with Lucy pre-installed if you need. And then you can just flash this one on your AP175 and you should be good to go. All right, so there is some error message and most likely this is because of this somewhere it still work in Rorad and it's not an official one. So there should be some error message, but in your case, everything should be work. Everything should be up and running without problem. So now let's go to 172. So now let's go to 172.16.9.250. And here, OpenWRT running on the Aruba AP175. Very good. This is OpenWRT running on the Aruba AP175. The target platform is ATH79 and generic. So we don't have an official build yet. The kernel version is 5.15.79. And this is the time. So we have 128 megabyte of RAM. So for the storage, we have, let's see, nine megabyte left, all right? So there are a lot of JCP v6 requests right here. I don't know where it come from. So let's go to network interfaces and take a look. We have only one interface and previously we already changed 
the IPv4 address. Network wireless, let's see. We have two radios, ABGN and then ABGN. So we have two similar network card. Let's enable one of the interface. And let's try to configure the LSID. So we can see that the radio is working. We have channel 36 right here. Let's click the edit button and then for the operating frequency, the mode is N, the band we can select between 5 GHz or 2.4. I prefer 5 GHz channel 36. Yep, the width we have 20 and 40 only, unfortunately. So the maximum transmit power, I want the maximum one. Let me put is AP175. 5G and wireless security. Let me just give a simple setup. All right, so far so good. We have advanced settings. So right here we do have WLAN roaming, but I don't need it for now. The the country code right now is already US by default because this AP175 has only a US version for now. So let's hit save and then save and apply. Alright, so we can see an error message that device is not associated. So we see that the status go back to disable again. And let's see, it is up and running now. So if I go to the Wi-Fi connection right here, I should be seeing this device right here. Yep. Let's try to connect to it. Perfect. I have connected to the AP and everything is working as expected. So you can see that the signal is only one or two bar. It is because I have yet to connect any antenna to the AP175. Let's go to properties and let's see we have the network band is 5 gigahertz, the network channels is 36, the link speed is 120 Mbps, and then everything is working as expected. So it is really great to see that. So let's see if we can configure the second radio. Yep, we can do that as well. With the second radio, we can also have the same option, the N mode or legacy mode. The band, it can be 2.4 or 5 GHz. The channel, the width, it can go up to 40 MHz, I'm not sure. Let's give it a try. So it's AP175. That's 2.4G while it's curtis, the key. All right, very good. So that's it. The powers and maximums and I will put the country code to US. So hit save and then save and apply again. And lastly, let's hit the enable button. All right, so far so good. We have the radio one up and running as well. And right here on the connection, I should be seeing the same. So let me scroll down a little bit. So where is it? Let me go and refresh the connection and we can see the AP1752.4G. All right, so, so far we have installed OpenWRTs on the Aruba AP175 and right now the work on this AP175 for the firmware is still in Rorant and there are still a lot of things Horikas is working on it to make it official. However, you can only get the snapshot, you can always get the testing you boot as well as the firmware to try it out. Thanks for watching and see you soon in another video. Bye bye.